this particular bill, we have taken great pains to actually look into issues of removing the regulatory processes um, from the actual uh, uh, processes of uh, the technologi technological issues in the oil and gas sector. We have also um, made it more transparent as far as we see it and made accountability much more apparent. The parameters in there, in terms of the fiscal parameters and the governance and controls parameters, have all been entrenched in such a way that it actually makes it much less opaque. And in addition to that, government for the first time historically has divested quite a lot of its control, contrary to what a lot of people are saying. But people also say that there will be no disclosure of oil sales and there will be no disclosure of payments to the government in, in terms of signature bonuses. Signature bonuses are actually um, areas of the oil and gas sector that are quite apparent and have always been so. The signature bonuses are quite clear up front in terms of um, the processes to do with um, OMLs and oil blocks. So it would not be possible for them not to, to be known to the public. These are areas that the public you know, has every opportunity to look into because they are called out up front during the process of the bid. And the purpose <coughs> of this bill, though, mm -hmm. is also to do with Nigeria's image at home and abroad. And the whole question of transparency, mm -hmm. people would argue that this bill doesn't go far enough to completely deal with those issues, given the level of corruption in Nigeria. Is this something you see as a start, this bill? Do you see it as the final product? You know, it is always said that Nigeria is, is a very corrupt uh, country. There is corruption in Nigeria. And it is also, I think, symbolic of the fact that there is corruption in most other places in the world at varying levels, of course. When we put in place bills like this, the intention is to ensure the sort of transparency and accountability that pushes back at that corruption and opaqueness. And I think we've done that. We've created at least five Kama companies, that is five companies with shareholding and equity from externals which means that the, com the, the, the government is actually divesting its control. A national oil company, which will stand independent of government. The wealth distribution isn't quite equal across Nigeria, as it might not be in other countries, I'm sure you would say. But <laughs> when it comes to the mm -hmm. Niger Delta, I mean, that was an issue very long standing, <clears throat> but, but got resolved uh, in 2009 mm -hmm. through an agreement. And one wonders now with the state of emergency in relation to Boko Haram, which has a Muslim extremist bent, um, whether there can be any accommodation with them in the same way. How do you see that situation unfolding in the northeastern part of your country? Well, again, um, as you may have um, heard, the government is putting very stringent measures in place in terms of the security situation and the Boko Haram situation. Uh, security is not under my purview. But sure. I think the whole world has seen the emergency rule imposed by the president on three of the northern states in the last few days. The intent, of course, is to contain um, the issues of the extremism and ensure that we are able to penetrate uh, the economies of those states contain. in the most positive ways. Contain the extremists, mm -hmm. but can they ever be eradicated? Can you win the hearts and minds of the general Muslim population mm -hmm. in that part of the country who, while not agreeing necessarily with Boko Haram yes. at all, n do not feel a great affiliation for the state and for what the army is doing in their region? Well, I think so. I think it does come down to the state of the economy in general. And I think that you will see, if you look particularly at the agricultural sector, which is the area in which we can derive the most benefits in terms of employment generation and job creation for the country. The very strident steps that are being taken at this time, I think in the entire continent of Africa, Nigeria is making the most forward progress, progressive steps in terms of its agriculture, because that is the area that the entire North benefits from, since that's our food basket in Nigeria. And over the next 12 to 18 months, you will find that the wealth and the import of the agricultural reforms does in fact hit the very fundamental uh, um, and the lowest levels of the agricultural farmers within the north. And I think you will see a major reform and turnaround from the heart of the north over the next 18 months in terms of, uh, in terms of agriculture. But in terms of oil, 
which you have mentioned several, and which is my sector. I think that the more we can transform the process and the framework of how not only we derive, but how we regulate and how we process the policies that implement um, the oil and the derivation that the various states in the Federation get from that oil, the better and the easier it will be for all Nigerians to begin to feel the impact of oil in various ways. Now okay. it is our gas, I'm sorry, that feeds the various NIPPs that are going to fuel the power that will transmit throughout the country. The transmission um, and distribution uh, infrastructure is what right now has to be tackled on the power sector very strongly. But when that is done, I think you will see a vast difference in terms of the power generation and distribution in the country, and that will translate into economic independence is, all the way down the line. Do you foresee, with your increase in reserves and this petroleum bill, that you will be able to be more independent and therefore more in control, in a sense, of how the funds are dispersed for your country, throughout your country? Well, I think it's more, I think already, the country is quite in control of how the funds are dispersed. But you, yeah. but you do know that we have a federal system and that the states get their portion of the revenues every month and that the state governments then di um, disperse to the local governments as well. And it is expected that the local governments will then ensure that these funds trickle down throughout the economies of the states. So it is not just a burden on the federal government alone. No, no. It is also um, a burden on the states to ensure that correct implementation of the revenues that they gain from the oil wealth of the country is properly implemented and properly disseminated as well. Where do you see Nigeria maybe five years, ten years from now? Well, I'm very hopeful that the National Assembly will implement the Petroleum Industry Bill um, at least this year. And I do hope that when it's implemented, the structure and framework of the bill uh, remains such that we can actually uh, move forward with our gas master plan and move forward with the independent shareholding companies that have been created to ensure that we are co more competitive and that we are more transparent. If that happens, and if we have that support to move forward, then I do believe that in the next three, four, five years and 10 years you know, and beyond, you will find that Nigerian, the Nigerian oil and gas sector is one where it is much, much harder for the manipulative corrupt practices that we have seen, um, not only in recent times, but actually they've been happening for quite a while. I think they've come to the fore mm -hmm. much more. And the reason they've come to the fore is because for the first time, this administration has actually allowed and actively sought out the perpetrators of these actions. It is not so easy to hide anymore in the oil and gas sector. And I do believe that once the PIB is promulgated into law, it will be even more difficult for manipulators of the system in oil and gas sector to find a hiding place. Therefore, it means that our revenues derivable from this sector have a much, much higher percentage chance of being equ equivalently or equitably distributed throughout the levels of the Nigerian economy and affect the polity in the way and manner in which they should be doing.